Our high stakes poker adventure takes on Europe. We're in Barcelona, Spain, known for their history, culture, and tapas. We stumble into a 100-200 high stakes cash game and buy in for 50,000 euros. Later in the night, we end up in a 70,000 euro pot with quads. Let's get into the action and play some cards. Starting off with a $40,000 buy-in, the blinds are 50, 100, 200 euros, and we pick up aces right off the bat. What a start. There's an early position raise of $500, a cutoff, three bets of $1,500, the button makes the call, and what in the world is happening here? What a warm welcome in Europe poker. There's so many people involved in this hand, so many people putting money in the pot. Let's make it more. I put in another raise to 6,500 here out of position. And action folds quickly to the button player, unfortunately. So the original razor folds, the three better folds, but this button player, he takes his time and he has somewhere between 25 to 30,000 euros in his stack and he goes all in snippity snap. Oh my God. How much quicker could I call with aces? Can't beat me to the pot here. I'm all in. My opponent is of course not super happy facing a snap call for well over a 50,000 euro pot. But here we decide to run it twice and we're up against Pocket Kings, the ultimate cooler. Both boards come clean for me. Clean for your boy. What a start to this session. Literally 30 seconds in, I am already up a full buy-in of 25,000 euros and that's it that's that's the video I, I guess that's that's all she wrote thanks for the invites for this game here in barcelona i'm gonna cash out and move on just kidding i'm not that guy but it would feel really nice to walk in win this and then just leave right but we're here to battle and the session continues i've got queen jack of hearts in the hijack and raise it up to 500 we get the button and straddler to make the call so we're going three ways to a flop which comes king three five two hearts Action's gonna check over to the button player and he fires out 900 euro. The straddler folds to me and I'm already up piles in this session. So let's gamble here against my opponent. Let's go with our flush draw. I decide to check raise to 3000 before my opponent takes his time and he doesn't decide to fold, which is kind of what I want him to do. He decides to go all in. Oh God, that's not what you want to see happen. My opponent has about 10,000 in his stack. I obviously cannot fold anymore. Let's hope he only has a king or a worse flush draw. I have to call and we decide to run it twice again. Very friendly game. First run out, I hit a flush. That's lovely second run out i brick with only queen high and my opponent has ace three bottom pair what a read to three bet shove his ten thousand euro into this pot with bottom pair and he made the right read anyways it's about a 20k euro pot we end up chopping this one up but uh wow that would have been so cool to hit a pair on the second run out and scoop this damn thing Quick interruption to talk about Poker Coaching's biggest sale for a very limited time right now. For about a week, you can get a Poker Coaching membership, whether it's a week or a month long or a year long package for over 50% off. I used poker coaching as the very first training tool when I wanted to get better at playing poker when I started playing the lower stakes, one, three, and two, five. I still use it today because their tools are still applicable now, whether I'm playing a $1,000 tournament or a $25,000 tournament. They got tons of content, whether it's a master class of tournaments, mid stakes cash games, low stakes cash games. They've got it all from a wide range of coaches and materials and training tools. So if you're interested in checking it out, use the link down in the description below for a very fat over 50% off discount pokercoaching.com slash rampage shout out to them for having this sale and letting me extend the offer to you guys and let's get back into the video moving right along i pick up another premium i mean just getting dealt premiums left and right here pick up ace king of diamonds on the button there's a cutoff who raises to 500 i decide to make it 1500 with a very good hand the big blind playing pretty deep he makes it 4500 He's got about 20,000 euro in his stack. And when action folds to me, facing this four bet, I think I can do one of two things. And neither of those two things involves calling. So we're playing about 100 big blinds deep. 
I could certainly just make it a very small re-raise, or I can just gamble and just stuff it in his face. And I decided to do that. I announced all in for about 20,000 effective, and my opponent snap folds, so I'm not going to complain here. It's a good pickup of 5k right back into my stack, and uh, I take it down uncontested. After making a free 5,000, let's try to make that and put it into use. I pick up ace five suited in early position and raise it up to 500. There's one player who makes the call, but then the big blind out of position makes it 2,700. Action folds to me here and facing a pretty large three bets. My re-raises have been working so far. I mean, granted, I've only had premium so far, but I should try to do it with some bad hands as well. And I think ace five suited is a pretty decent one to try to splash around and bloat the size of the pot. So I decided to put in yet another raise this time to 6,500. The other player who called ends up folding and now back onto the big blind who announces all in of 19,000. That sucks. This is one way to lose 6,500 real quick. Remember when I said I wanted to put that extra 5,000 into use? Well, it was an easy win of 5,000 and I lost it even easier of a total of 6,500. I let this one go because I'm not going to call an all-in with ace-5 suited. And uh, we're going to move on because that's one way to torch a good chunk of money. This next clip you're going to see is actually absurd. I had no idea that this is happening in Europe. Every single hour, we put in 500 euro each hour for a PLO flip. Why do we do it every single hour, you ask? It's not because we want to gamble that much. It's because the rake that the casino is taking is 1,500 euro per hour. That's right. Everyone is paying about 200 euro in rake. The casino is just taking 1,500 euro off the table at this game. But hey, at the very least, how can I complain? We get free sushi on the side. So damn right, I'm going to make the most of this and eat as much sushi and drink as much free wine as I possibly can during this session. We didn't end up winning that PLO flip, but let's keep winning some hands. Picking up sevens in early position, I raise it to 500 and I get the cutoff to make the call. Going to a flop of 993 two hearts, I check it over to him with a pair and my opponent... Well, he, uh, I don't know how do I say this. He goes all in for 5,000? He's been doing this a lot today. Uh, he's done it before in the past, and I'm not going to, to fold this one. I don't think he has trips. I think he has a flush raw or something, so I stick it in there. I call because I'm not folding versus, uh, well, a 5x pot shove. So I show my hand pocket sevens. He decides to run it twice. And both runouts seem relatively safe for the most part, right? The hearts didn't get there. I end up with a full house in the bottom one. But my opponent shows 3-5 offsuit, and I hit an insane suck out on the second runout to win this pot. Lucky, lucky, lucky me. It looks like it's just my day. I win over a 10,000 euro pot here, and I'll scoop this one. Uh, he ended up rivering a full house, and I suck out on the river with... <laughs> A bigger full house. Uh, things are looking great for me in this session. Moving right along, I'm running pure. We pick up 8-7 offsuit on the straddle, and when the hijack raises to 500, Big Blind makes the call. I'm not going to go anywhere for 300 more, so we're in there multi-way, and the flop is pretty good in 7-5-3 to diamonds. Top pair, multi-way, action check checks to the hijack player who bets out 500. Pretty small bet on this board. Big blind ends up folding, and here I decided to check raise in this spot. Do I think it's the right move right now? I don't know. It's a little bit unorthodox, but I thought it was okay considering the size of his bets. Uh, 500 seemed a little weak. I'm going to attack it with top pair, maybe just try to get a fold. But, you know, I'm not talking about this hand because he folded, because he makes the call for 2k total, and we're going to a turn, which is the queen of clubs. Now, very tricky board, a tricky card. Two flush rows on the board, another card over my pair. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do in this spot besides get really greedy and maybe try to get a hand like a diamond draw to call. So I make it 3,000, okay? I get called by backdoor clubs. I get called by the diamond flush draw, and I hopefully didn't get called by a queen. 
So when I make it 3,000, my opponent does end up calling. So we're already in a very dicey situation with a big pot ballooning up with not a very good hand. We're off to River, which is the king of diamonds. Front door flush gets there. Not the card I want to see. I actually can think of many other cards that I would like to see over this king of diamonds. So um, here I decide to just check because I have a pair and I don't know how I ever win this at this point. And then my opponent goes all in for 15,000 total. That is going to do the trick. Very, very big all in. And it's a very, very quick and easy decision for me. I'm out of there with 8-7 off suit, torching 5k this hand. That probably wasn't very ideal. The session's winding down, but we're moving towards one of the largest hands of the night. You're going to want to strap in here because I pick up pocket threes in the cutoff. Little baby pairs, let to love that. I raise up to 500 and I get the button to immediately three bet me to 1700. Small boy makes the call of the 1700 and I'm priced into set mine because everyone's playing pretty deep stacked. And if I had a set here, it's going to be pretty disguised. I make the call and we see a flop of 953. Let's freaking go. We're in bink set. City here. Action checks it over to the button player. Of course, I'm going to check my bottom set to my opponent. He makes it 2,500. Small blind gets out of the way and folds. And now with bottom sets, I think I just have to check raise uh, for a lot of different reasons. Because one, I have a very strong hand when we're playing very deep stacks. I don't want to see a bad turn card where I can't get much value. Uh, and if he has a flush draw, then I would like to charge for that flush draw. And if he has an overpair, then I'd like to stack that overpair. So I make it 7,000 right off the bat. Starting off with a check raise here, trying to get some value, and my opponent tank calls with about 30,000 behind. So here when he calls, it seems like he must have a very good hand, and I hope he has like aces or something like that. So we're going to a turn with one of the bigger pots of the night brewing now. Turn is the jack of hearts. It's okay, okay? I certainly could be losing to pocket jacks here now at this point, but I can't be afraid of monsters under the bed. I've definitely got to go for value, and I think I have one of two options, which is somewhat tricky here. I certainly could go half pot, maybe. I want to size for an all-in on the river, and I don't want to get too greedy on this turn card here, right? So if he has 30k behind, I can bet 10k on the turn, then 20k on the river. Or I could also just shove all-in right here, right now, and I get all the hands that are already going to call to commit their stack. Aces, kings, queens. I can't imagine those hands are ever going to be folding to an all-in bet. I take my time and think about those two options, and I decided to just go for what I said in the first place. Just bet 10,000, half pot. It seems like a very easy decision to commit his stack on the river here and not get too greedy. I don't want to risk losing value if my opponent has a flush draw or something because he's never going to fold a flush draw to a half pot bet. So for that reason, I make it 10,000 and my opponent takes his time and ends up making the call, which is lovely because that means the pot is bloating up almost $40,000 into the middle, and let's see what happens. River is the three of clubs. What? Overkill. Guys, I have quads. Uh, <laughs> I have quads with 40,000 in the middle, and I'm going to announce all in for his last 20,000. I take my time. I Hollywood it over. Of course, I can't just immediately snap all in because that looks really tricky. I finally announce all in after pretending to think and my opponent goes into the tank. And when he doesn't snap call, I don't love it because he obviously doesn't have a flush and he's thinking about contemplating on a fold with an overpair, which would be a disastrous situation. Anyways, he takes his time and ends up announcing a couple things out loud. He says he can fold sometimes, which is not really what you want to hear when you, you want to get called. And he says he'll call 25% of the time. Seems like he does some sort of randomization of the 25% and ends up folding and letting me know he folded aces with the ace of clubs, which is such, such a sick fold by him. And a very, very good one at that. So got to give my opponent props. I guess it was a very bad river. I ended up doing a little troll thing where I let my opponent pick one card. Obviously, now that everyone has seen the vlog, it doesn't matter. But in game, I wanted to troll him and say you can pick one card. And uh, he does throw a, a three, of course. And it makes it look like I have trips, but quads, man. Didn't get paid in full, but I will scoop a very large pot nearing the end of the session. One of the last actual hands of the night now. I pick up aces again. We start off the session with aces. Let's end it off with aces. I'm on the straddle as well, and we see a button player who's been somewhat tight. A little nitty, you know, I would like to say. He doesn't play many hands. He raises the 500. So when he doesn't play many hands and he's raising, it makes it seem like he has a very good hand. Big Blend ends up making the call, and here I'm going to have the perfect opportunity to look like I'm squeezing, but really I've just... I've 
just got aces. So I make it 3,000 here, and the button ends up making the call, and we're pretty deep stacked. He's got about 40,000 in his stack here, and we're going to a flop, which comes jack, eight, five, rainbow. Not a whole lot going here, pretty dry board. And all things considered, I think I have a pretty good spot to bet. But I think sometimes I've got to turn some of my strong hands into checks as well. So for that reason, I decided to check it over to my opponent and he decides to throw out a bet of 2100. Upon this bet of 2100, I'm kind of pulled between check raising or just making the call here. If there was a flush draw, I think I'm more inclined to check raise and get more money in there. But uh, given it's a rainbow board, I decided to slow play this aces and make the call and play it very passively. Now going to a turn, which is the nine of spades, brings it back to a flush draw and certainly not a connected card I'd like to see. I check it over my opponent and luckily my opponent checks it back. So it seems like he doesn't have a hand better than mine, or at least not yet. Now going to a river, which comes in eight. Now this is a very good card to see because now I have the best two pair possibility. My opponent doesn't have many trips here as played after betting on the flop. So... I'm going to blast out and I'm going to hope somehow a jack can make the call. Or maybe pocket tens can make the call. I blast out 7,700, but I'm not going to kill you with the suspense. I said, but because he doesn't call, unfortunately. So my slow play here, trying to be trappy, trying to be tricky, doesn't actually end up working out. But at least I didn't lose the hand and I'll pick up a couple thousand bucks my way. And that's a very nice way to end the session, you know, put a nice bow to the session where I win a massive pot with aces, I win a smaller pot with aces to end the night, and I'm going home happy. All right, everyone, back at my Airbnb here in Barcelona, it's 1, 2 a.m., a couple wines deep, and we're going to record this outro because that's what happens. When you pay $1,500 in rank every single hour, uh, I pay for five hours, by the way, which means uh, collectively as a table, me personally, probably divided by eight or something, we paid five times 15, $7,500 in rank. Oh my goodness. Anyways, there's not much to complain, to complain about besides that because, you know, we get some free wine, we get some free food. They still make infinite money, but it's okay. Today I probably won a whole lot more money than I ever would have uh, thought was possible here in the Europe games. In Barcelona, cash games, uh, we played 50, 100, 200 all night, played for five hours. I bought in for 40,000 euros, I'm not going to say dollars, bought in for 40,000 euros and I cashed out for um, 97,850 euros. That's a win in my book. More than I ever thought was possible here, to be honest with you. I just ran really well. I picked up aces a few times. Freaking rivered quads, which was overkill. Uh, all the things went really well for me, to be honest with you. So uh, hit that like button. <sighs> I've been having a tough Barcelona trip. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know I'm losing a lot in tournaments. But in cash games, I seem to be running pure. Pick up aces, hitting sets, all of the things. Aces into kings is like a dream spot. So things went well, safe to say. Hopefully you enjoyed this video um, here in Barcelona, having a wonderful time. If you want to follow me on Instagram to be caught up in real time of what's going on, then do that, Rampage Poker on Instagram. And thanks so much for following. I'll see you guys in the next video. Glad to book a, book a win. It's really good for the, for the mental state, for the, for the confidence in poker, because you know there hasn't been many tournament vlogs and that's for a very good reason, because I'm not doing well in tournaments, but I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.